okay welcome back to the discussion of uh, design methodology so we saw what was the design methodology and the overall idea so this explains the whole process now we are going to get more into the details of how to make it happen so i hope you took a break and you're back so let's do the next chunk the fundamental thing that i want you to understand about designing things is that it is people oriented it is not a matter of it is not a matter of um, making stuff that is only secondary the primary thing the secondary doesn't mean that's important what i mean is that it has to be driven by people so i want you to understand that you may build a completely successful product in terms of meeting all specifications but for some people people don't like it for some reason people don't like it and you got a flop on your hands so i want you to understand that uh, you have to keep people up front so the method is not specific to any physical thing it, it you can apply it to all kinds of things so the idea is you start out so let me quickly go through the method you start out with a need statement a need analysis that leads you to development of specifications we using client input from that you develop functionality that gives rise to embodiment then you have evaluation then you have redesign by the way redesign may make you look at everything all over again so i'm going to put this back up here because you may have to revisit each of these things okay typically speaking so let me explain this is the high level stuff this is the low level stuff okay and the common thing is functionality so you may look at it and say okay it all works what the heck does this mean i mean some need okay whatever that means specs i don't know uh, functionality so i will tell you that these things have specific meaning and there's a specific way to approach them and you can do this for anything so let me give you an example okay so you are looking and you want to buy a new cell phone okay so you look at it and you say well there are millions of cell phones how do i pick a good one so you could say okay I, i'll just pick whatever my friend has okay or you could think about it and say what functionality do i want so many in many cases you may want to say okay my family and friends are in a particular network so i want to be able to make sure that i have the same network that's not really the functionality you want right you may want something where it is cheap for me to make phone calls because that's how primarily i'm using it i may i may be i should be able to text i should be able to i should be able to take pictures i should be able to keep my uh, my, my stuff going properly uh, you know i i mean it has to look cool right so i say okay i want a, an accessory that's the look cool, looking cool part so you know i want a fancy accessory to whatever i wear and things like that which illustrate my personality and allows me to make phone calls and keep in touch with my friends in a simple manner so this is your me statement okay then you develop specifications you say okay what do i mean by uh, that it has to look cool so for different people it means different things so if you look at me i look at it and i know that i am not i am a klutz when it comes to gadgets so i want something and i love clean lines so i i like things that are i like square better than round i mean this is that's me okay so what it is is that naturally for me i wanted i wanted something that looked nice in mean, my view of things so i define that as me being that have clean lines no buttons sticking out no nothing that kind of stuff right uh, the second thing is i wanted my primary purpose for this kind of stuff is to use is to be able to make phone calls and keep track of things 
so I wanted like a PDA type of thing right so then I can start developing the specifications right so then I say okay what is the real functionality that I want so then I start looking at it and saying okay fine I need to be able to make phone calls that's the easy functionality any cell phone will provide that so that's not a particularly discriminating thing what happens is I am now like 45 so it's difficult for me to actually look at the keyboard and it's difficult for me to use my thumb so I want something which which provides me with a large keyboard when I want it so that means I probably want something that has a software keyboard you see where I'm headed right so that was one of my major attractions for the for the iPhone because it's a large keyboard you know you guys don't think about it but that's a big thing I wanted a camera because I want to be able to take photographs of random things that I see on the street and for illustration for various things in engineering design so that was actually a very key criterion for me a simple camera setup so that I can take pictures as I go right then I looked at it for me cost was not such a driving thing if I had all of these things of course cost is always a, you know given everything else being the same so I was I was okay with spending a little bit of money but I wanted something that was that was, that was simple um, I wanted something that could be you know like that I can start developing uh, functions right so then um, you know so for me actually speaking email on the phone is not such a critical thing because many times I don't want to be on email who wants to be on email all the time you know you're, you're, it's like a, you know I'm not that important none that's number one or you could think I'm very important so if my time is precious I don't want to spend it on, on answering email okay um, the actual thing is I'm kind of addicted to email and at least this way I can prevent I can prevent myself from looking at email all the time okay the other thing is I wanted to keep all my all my contacts information with me in a convenient way okay so there are lots of requirements notice I have not yet decided what I wanted to buy but there are lots of requirements like that then finally we come to embodiment evaluation and redesign means you got to go back and ask yourself what is the what is the thing that we want to do the main point about this people oriented approach is that you can apply to anything so this is a design this is a way of thinking this is not a way of building engineering products this is a way of thinking the more you get used to this way of thinking you will see that the better you get at making decisions which are which have a lot of complexity okay you can do this for all kinds of things you can do this for vacation planning you can do this for the exam preparation it will take you you might think tell me that's crazy you mean exam preparation sure you look at it and you say what's your need exam preparation is very simple i want to i want to be able to get the best grade and you may decide okay i want to get an a with minimal effort okay so what are the specifications you need to know you need to be able to answer so i might say 80 percent is an a so that means you need to if there are 10 questions you need to answer at least eight questions out of 10 plus a factor of safety which means you should be able to answer 9 out of 10 that's your primary specification then you look at functionality and you say okay what do I need to do what are the tasks I need to do so then I look at the exam list and I say okay what is it so this is where you need to go and ask your you need to have a list of things that you should be able to do in order to do well in the exam it's not enough to say the problems are of this kind what is the skill that you should demonstrate can you make a list if you make a list of this by the way this will be one of the things that I will make you do for exams for example because it will help you think about it once you make a list then you can ask yourself how am I going to prepare for it the minute I ask the question how I will get into embodiment right so that's how it works and then you can say okay you took you do the exam you can evaluate and say okay how well did I do and then you can come back and say okay what do what where did I go wrong this part is not something that you think about with, with regard to examination this is what we mean by rational examination taking if you do this right you can do all kinds of things you have to just get used to this process okay let's let's give you an example and then you'll start thinking okay so the task was to build a child, children's walker you know you know paraplegic children uh, children with cerebral, cerebral palsy this kind of stuff so, so you want to build a walker you look at it and you say okay what's the need you want somebody to support some weight fantastic 
So what I do is I build something that looks like a chair. You know, I've deliberately given you like a fuzzy picture because I don't want you to see what brand name it is and all that. So I've given you a bad fuzzy picture. But you can get the general idea, right? If I want something that can bear load, the best thing to do is to build either a truss or a frame. It's not a challenging thing to think about. So what happens is people build trusses or frames. Okay. What I want you to understand is that this design is focused on stuff. We need to focus on people. What has happened when I look at a design like this is that I have defined it too narrowly. I have defined it as the ability to carry the load of a child. That's not the actual requirement. The actual requirement is for you to, for the child to be allowed to do the things that a normal child would do, even though by normal I mean child without, let's say, cerebral palsy or something like that, that they could do in a reasonable way. So you can ask yourself, what are the activities that, that, I, that a child would have to do? And then take a look. This is an entirely different design. Okay, so it says it shows this is for life enhancement. That is the primary task of most of our designs. So it is actually life enhancement. So what happens is I am looking at a child and I am saying, okay, what life do I need? How do I enhance a children's that child's life? Based on how I do it, I am going to come up with a completely different design. Notice the wheels. Notice how it allows the child to sit somewhere. One of, the, one of the problems with many of these walkers is that it doesn't provide the child with their ability to do things by themselves. I don't know about you, but if you have seen children, the first thing that they want to do is they want to do it by, by themselves. Gives them a sense of control over their environment. So if your design provides control over their environment, it will be successful. You will build something that's much better. So you need to think high level. not low level. The way you think high level is you have to ask why. So if you say okay I need something that, that is supposed to wear, bear a first child's weight, the first question that should come out of your mouth is why? Why should it bear the child's weight? What is the child trying to do? Then you will go higher level. Okay, then this level is what? And then if you want to go detail level, you ask how? You know what I mean? Why, what, how? That's how we think. Why gets you to a higher level? What tells you? So you start off with what do I need to do? That's the level at which you are. If you ask why do I need to do that, you will go at a higher level. If you ask how do I need to do that, you will go down into further detail. Okay. So that is the basic structure. So the thing is, I want you to understand that design is not a linear progression. It is iterative. Every iteration provides more information. So the basic idea is if you don't know choose something. This is the what if question. So I suppose I don't know how big the bar has to be. 
I'm going to say, okay, what should it be? Let's pick one meter. Let's say one lap. You will either, you know, it's like think of, think of like a, uh, think of like a gunner in a ship, right? So what happens is you have to fire at a target. What do you do? You, we are not looking like a, I want you to understand this is not the same thing as one of the sharpshooters, right? You take careful aim and squeeze. You know, all this breathing in and out and being very careful and hiding behind bushes and all that. That's not what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is big gunner in World War II. So what, what did he do? We don't know exactly how far we are. So what do you do? You fire one. Make a guess. It falls too, too fast. Fire another. Gets too near. Then based on this, you get better. Okay, so what we do is we will make, we will pick something. We will go ahead with the design. Then we'll find out whether we we overshot or whether we were whether we were below. If we were below, we go back and say, okay, what will what will make us make us get closer to the target? If we are above, we will try the same thing. The reverse process. Okay, so that is the cycle, and you will keep going round and round like this. So it is not so. Design is actually about redesign. You know, the first design is not going to work. Design is about redesign. I want you to understand. So, 90% of the time, you are redesigning something. Okay. So, I want you to understand. We are going to go around, around, around. So, you start out with need. Then, you go to functionality. Then, you go to embodiment. Then, you go to evaluation. Then, you go back to need again. Functionality. Embodiment, evaluation, that's how it goes. That's the design cycle. So I want you to understand. So you gotta get this into your head. By the way, this is a very important thing. So there are two important pictures that you need to know. And the way, so remember this one tells you what's the sequence, overall sequence. This one tells you what is the cycle. So it starts out with need, goes to functionality. So need, then there will be specification development. There is client input here that leads to functionality, that leads to embodiment, that leads to ev evaluation, that leads to new cycle again. So we go back and relook at the need and say, okay, did it do what we supposed to do? Or are we going to redo it? Okay, so we go like that. We go round and round the circle. So sometimes we may back up because we thought this embodiment met that functionality or not. So in many cases, we may actually back up. So, we may go either way in the cycle, but basically the overall cycle goes like that. Okay, this is a very important graphic, so I want you to make sure that it should be that this is something that is completely inside your head because this is really, really important. Okay, so first question you have to answer is who is your client? Before you start, so now we are looking at the details, now we are looking at need. So the first thing you do is ask, who is your client? So I want you to understand that client does not mean the one who is paying you the money. It means anybody who is affected by what you do is your client. They have a say, they have, this is usually called vaguely stakeholder. Somebody who has a stake in what you, in what you say. Okay, so stakeholder is your client and it could be all kinds of things. So if you're building a bridge, it means the people on either side, the organization that's building the bridge, the animals that are using, that, that are actually living in the water, or the people who are using boats, everybody is your client, right? I want you to understand that why is that part of the reason why we are so obsessive about these kinds of things is what I listed here. Engineers are the buffer between people who want to sell things and the public who use them. What do I mean by the buffer? Because in many cases, the people who want to sell things do not know what is the effect of what they sell. The public does not know what are the dangers of what they buy. Engineers are the ones who decide whether it is safe or not. Right? I want you to understand that any idiot can fly a rocket. I mean, build a rocket, that's not a big deal. But to build a rocket in which people can travel safely back and forth, 
requires an engineer. Right. So I want you to understand this is a fundamental difference between an in, between an between an inventor and an engineer. So at an invention level, when you wear your inventor hat, you're not really worried about safety and public public interest and all of those things. But as when you wear the engineer's hat, you are worried about safety and public interest. So I want you to make sure that you understand that aspect of invention versus engineering. Okay. The main thing for us. As engineers, is what we said here, which is it has to be safe to use and have predictable behavior. That is, it should have the behavior that you that was advertised, so that people realize okay how it how it works, right? So we talked about what is meant by a client. Okay, so to give you a, to give you an interesting example. Uh, let's look at a situation in which uh, you know you are you are building a you know what is that a scooter you know one of the child children scooters you know those things with wheels. So who is your client? Pause and think about who is your client for this. Right? No, just think about it. Okay, pause. Did you pause? Did you think about it? Did you make a list? So I came up with the following thing: the child, okay, parents, child's friends. There may be other clients. Maybe you had other things. That's a good thing. But I'm just listing. Clearly, these three people are involved. In fact, in many cases, the buying decision is ultimately made by the parent. And from the parent's point of view, so for a child, it should be the main thing is how it looks, popularity, ease of use, and fun. For parents, it is safety, cost. Right? I'm just listing a couple. For friends, it should be easy to, it, they should be able to share it. And then there may be other things which is like storage, space, and durability and all this stuff. So how long will it last? So maybe they have more than one child and you know many times the scooter is not used by the child but by some adult who is who's just showing the kid, all kinds of things. So you have to worry about how you design this. So then you have to ask who are the likely users and it will turn out to be all three and you have to decide who, what is the use case. By use case, let me write this down, means how is a particular user going to interact. So, in fact, for real big products, I mean complicated products, you will have actually say focus groups and this, that, and the other. People will study how, what people think, and all this stuff. There's a very complicated process associated with it. Okay. So that's the use case. The next question you have to ask is, what do they need? So I want you to understand that there is a difference between what people need and what do they want. Okay, so let's get back to the example of hammer. So somebody comes and says, okay, I need a hammer. I want a hammer. So then you have to ask, hey, what do you need? You know, this happens to me. I have a I have a quite a collection of tools, you know, and this is what you expect from a hardware store. You go to a hardware store and you say, I want a hammer. You know, you want the hardware store the person who is behind it to ask you some sensible questions as to what exactly do you need. The way they ask you is you know, by asking you how exactly are you planning to use it. So what happens is the, the, the person may say well I needed to flatten out a dent in my, in my car or it may turn out I need to break up a brick wall in the back of my house 
or a, or a brick patio in the back of my house. Or it might be I need to hammer a nail into a wall. Right? So the common thing for a hammer is the following. So what happens is depending upon the case, you might say, so this is where I start out and I say, okay, um, I want a object that hammers a nail into a wall. Okay. Now let's look at all the proper nouns. So and all the verbs: hammer, nail, wall. Okay. And here it says an object, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as saying I want an object that. What what does this verb mean? So that is the critical thing. I need to give the I need to convert the action. into uh, something that relates to, to physics or chemistry or mathematics or biology. That is, it should convert it into something scientific. Why? Because science has rules and I want to be able to apply the rules of science to rules. So I want to convert this into a scientific thing. So what does hammering mean? So from a, if I were to ask, okay, from a physics point of view, explain this thing. Explain the act of hammering. So you might say, okay, I am going to hit something. Explain what is meant by hitting from your physics knowledge. It's clearly it's a physical phenomenon that you're trying to do. Say, oh, I need to transfer momentum. And then you say, okay, momentum transfer over a short time. Because pushing something may also work. So you may say, okay, for a nail, I don't really need to even do a transfer of momentum. I'll show you in a second. So what is the thing? So you say, okay, I need an object to transfer impulse to a long, short, object so that it can penetrate a flat surface. Show me. Then you can say, okay, so that's what a hammer does. But then the correct question to ask is why? Why do you need this object? And it may turn out that the guy is trying to hang a, hang a picture. And you can say, hey, wait a minute. You don't really need to do that. You could get one of these things that can stick to the wall. So I can give you a completely different solution. Right? So on the other hand, it may turn out that that's really what you need. You really, so the, the thing is, if I'm trying to hang the picture, I don't need to transfer momentum. Transferring momentum to a nail is one way to hang a picture. On the other hand, if I want to do what is called short peening or peening hammer, you know, where I where I go and, and hit something repeatedly, the only way to do that is by transferring momentum. There is no other way. Right? So in some cases it's an essential requirement, in other cases it's not. So by the way, you can try this kind of thing for a long work. You know what a long work, right? So you go and try, I have put mover, but it is mover. Okay, lawn mower is a very interesting example. You can go and try. You can see what happens with a lawn mower, and you try and ask yourself, what is the high level requirement for a lawn mower? Similarly, ask yourself, what is the high level requirement for a walking stick? Try, try your hand at writing these kinds of things. 
every time you write something you can ask why and the idea is look at every verb and convert it into a physical description scientific description so the words are the most important things actions are the most important things when you talk about any statement and then you have to give a high level description of the other stuff once you are finished you have to ask why do you need this is this really what you need is there something else that you need what's the story here it's very very important to ask the why question if you don't you will land up with too specific a design okay so let's look at it so here is a lot more okay and what is it supposed to do i wrote i need a mean in means to maintain the level of grass in a region notice how i wrote this right i didn't say i needed to cut the grass i needed to maintain the level of grass in a region please so then you could say hmm are there other things that i could do yeah i could do other things i could for example do slow growing grass so that the level hardly changes i could get sheep or goats or something like that and eat the grass so that the level is constant i could do a whole bunch of other things right a lot more is a specific way to do that you might say wait a minute i cannot do all of that i have whatever grass i have in my lawn for example in my lawn there is the saint augustine grass uh, saint augustine grass grows like heck in the summer okay why i put saint augustine grass it was already there i'm not going to replace it so there are restrictions and that that means that i i needed to get something that looks like a long one okay very good so then you can say well how am i going to do it it will get you into a more detail level the problem is that once you get into a more detail level your subconscious want to take over this is a big problem you want to slow the process down so that your rational brain can engage otherwise the subconscious will say oh yeah 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 lawn mower i know lawn mower needs a blade and it's a horizontal blade and then two two four wheels and then a with a gear and then a motor and then this wait 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 it will what it will do is it will think about all the lawn mowers it knows and come up with something that describes the lawn mowers that it knows not what is the actual design of a particular lawn mower the problem for the for this kind of a thing is that if you don't let it it will be a problem so let it let it it's okay come up with an idea but the next thing to do is not building is not thinking about okay how am i going to do it because your your subconscious brain will go on asking how 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 so you get deeper and deeper into the details you need to go back and ask yourself well why did i need this thing so i want you to understand that don't use your first idea directly so the most important lesson don't use your first idea directly use it to back out the functionality what do you have to do to get this functionality you have to look at the verb act action object format this is critical to think about if this will take some effort this is not a simple thing to do okay very large projects you have to do this in a very systematic way usually everybody balks at this because 
they are not used to using their rational brains. So this will this will be painful. This is the same thing as doing mathematics. I will tell you that this will be painful, and you will be like in a hurry, you will be itching to go forward and say, okay, let's do it, because your subconscious brain is like, come on, slow folk, let's get it done. But if you let your subconscious rule, it will quickly take you into a ditch. Okay, it is very fast, but it's not very, you know, it's not very discerning. So you have to let your conscious brain kind of assimilate this by going through this process. The primary purpose of going through this process is not to come up with a structure. It is to let, let the problem soak into your head. That's what we mean by soak time. You want to think about it, that's what we mean. So you got to let the problem soak into your head by doing all these things. So it has to be an action object. Oops, sorry. So let us look at for a hammer. Immediately, your brain comes up with something like this. So let's look at each part and ask what does it do? What does the head do? Okay, so it says store momentum. Can you see? It says action object. Right? Then it says deliver impulse. Okay, that's the primary description of what the head does. Okay, now you might say, hey, that looks easy. It is not, by the way. You have to think about it a lot, a lot and then you will begin to realize how to write this. Okay. I want you to see if there is any other it might say, you might say remove nail, but that's too low level because remove is not an action that makes sense. You have to say, okay, what does removing nail mean? You have to say apply leverage or apply force to a, to a small object. So you might want to break that down into further pieces. So removing nail is a complex task. Break it into further pieces. Let us see. In fact, that will be a good exercise for you to try out. Okay. What does the handle do? So, let us see. First, it moves head. Right? In fact, you are using it for leverage. You want to grab it. When you lift it, you know, it goes higher. So, especially for a sledgehammer, you want to be able to lift it. So, it provides... Um, you know, it provides a place for you to grasp it. So, it, it enables you to move it. It also protects, oops, what did I do here? Sorry about that guys. I think I messed up here. Let's see, eventually I'll get it back. Give me a second. Hmm. It's not rotating this thing at all. So let's see if I can get it back to ordinary stuff by doing something. Let us see if this one works. Ah, finally. Good. I was just about to give up. Okay, sorry about that, but I messed up with my tablet PC and you know we were bouncing all over the place. Okay. So that's so if you look at the handle, it has another thing which is protect hand. Okay, and then you can ask yourself, what does protect hand entail? So it, you might be able to say, okay, you know, dampen uh, the impulse. So for example, that's one of the reasons why we use wooden handles. A metal handle, I mean, it's like think of like a tennis racket, right? Or what are these things? What happens is the handle should be able to absorb the impact. 
You see what I mean? Otherwise, you will get shock waves to your head, to your hand. So that's some of the things that you need to consider. Now let's look at a different example. Now this time I'm going to show you an actually well-developed uh, function structure. Automobile control system. What is it supposed to do? It is supposed to drive a car. Notice it says drive car. Okay. How does it drive a car? It has to monitor the environment, monitor the instrument data, control the speed, control direction, control visibility, control comfort, control car health. Look at how many things it has to do. If you ask why, drive in the car. Okay. If you look at monitor the environment, what does it do? It has to get sensor data. It has to compare with norm. What is the proper version? And then based on this, you can do other things. Similarly, it has to monitor tire speed. Monitor setting. And then um, adjust throttle. That's how it controls speed. Can you see that? So if you ask how you get more into detail level. So for example, you can say, how do you get sensor data? So then you can say, okay, fine. Now you're getting into the detail. So you say, okay, you first have to power the sensor. You have to do etc. etc. Et you keep going. Does that make sense to you? Every level you go, you will get more and more detail. Okay, so ultimately you will come to the stage, okay, if I wanted to monitor the tire speed, how do I do it? So I, I need to say, okay, convert tire speed into, into an electrical signal, boost the signal, convert you and convert it into, uh, you know, some kind of a visual signal. So then you have monitored the tire speed. Okay, then you say, okay, okay, fine. How do I convert tire speed into electrical signal? You can go deeper and say, okay, now I am at the level where I am talking about individual parts. So that's the basic idea. So what happens with the functionality, the function structure is that it gives you lots of detail. You know? How much detail do you go into? You keep going until the detail stops mattering to your customer. If it is if it is below the level for your client, if your client doesn't care about this functionality, then it is called activity. That is something that you do inside that the client doesn't care. The client may not care what kind of sensor you have. So beyond that level, they don't care. So for example, with the previous case, below this, your client does not care. The client may care that you are monitoring the environment because that's something that the client is very much interested in. Oh, yeah, okay, so I need to control the environment. Very good. Control the car health. Very good. That the client cares about. Control the comfort. Yes, very good. That's the client. The client cares about all of this thing. To monitor environment means surrounding, surrounding environment. So this is, has to do with safety. Okay. So what happens is there are certain things that the client cares about. By the time you get here, the client says, I don't care. So now it is activity. Now this is not something that you worry about in terms of uh, function structure. Now you are talking about specific ways of doing the activity and now this is detail. So beyond this, this is the engineer's realm. This is where you, this is the back office realm. So at this stage, you are done with the high level and you are beginning the low level you can see how the function structure actually connects the high level stuff that your client needs to the low level stuff that you have to build. That's how this thing works. Okay. So I want you to understand that that's the basic process. So we keep going until the function structure matters. We talked about what is meant by activity. So activity is called embodiment. It describes the inner workings of what's going on. Okay. And it may change. This is what you will mess around. 
the activities are non negotiable the, i'm sorry the, the functionality is non negotiable <coughs> the activities can be changed so if i have a car if i have a control system that drives a car the fact that it has to control the speed is non negotiable but how it controls the speed that's up to you because your client doesn't care if your client cares about how it controls the speed that will also become non negotiable okay until i mean after the initial negotiations with the client you you fixed that's what that thing is fixed okay so i want you to understand that that's how you build a function structure it's time for you to take a break you have been through a fairly long lesson so time for you to take a break and you can come back and we'll do the next part okay Yes, I think.